Hey guys, Jeff Giles, I'm here, Giles and Mixed Martial Arts, I'm here with Chris, and Chris actually has a fight coming up in a week and a half, uh, so we've been working really hard today, we just finished, they just did 30 minutes straight on the pads, and uh, we, one of the techniques that uh, we worked on, I want to show you guys, and hopefully his opponent's not watching, because, uh, you know, Chris might be pulling this off uh, in the fight, but this is a technique that's going to help you land your low kick, uh, outside low kick, okay, so from here, fighting stance here, I got him against the ropes, or the cage, it doesn't matter, okay, so my, I'm keeping a good range, I don't let him out, I'm keeping him, um, keeping him between the cage and me. I'm not letting him get back to the center behind me. My fighting stance is up, I'm at a good distance where he's not, you know, pounding me in the face right here, so my chin is down. Now I want to land that right kick. So if I throw it now, he's going to lift his leg up, he's going to block with his shin, and I'm going to hurt myself potentially. Okay, so I don't want to kick when he's ready, or he can counter it. So from this position with uh, my left jab, I'm going to get him to move to his left. Because normally he won't always move to his left. Because if he moves to his left, he knows he might get kicked in the legs. But I'm going to force him to move to his left by jabbing my jab, not at his face. If I jab at his face, he stays still. If I jab to the right, he moves to the left. If I jab to this side of his face, to my left, the right side of his face, if I start jabbing, Chris is not going to move yet. And he's going to start throwing my jab here. And I don't even really throw it to the land too much. I just kind of pop it out on that side of his cheek. Just outside. So where does he decide to go? He doesn't want to go this way. If he goes this way, he's going to walk right into it. So he decides to start to go tiptoe this way. And when he does, that's when he's going to land and locate. Because all his weight is moving to that side and it's very hard for him to pull his leg back. It's very hard for him to check the kick. It's hard for him to counter in, in any other way. So get your fighting stance, chin down, elbows in, good range, corralling him against the cage. Don't let him behind you. You understand what that means? If I go over here, he's going to go boom and take the center. I don't want him to have a chance. Okay? Or if I go here, he's going to go this way. So, I keep his back to the cage, hands up, and I start throwing my jab in the air on this side of his face. Okay? He starts to move, and that's the time I'm going to throw my low kick. Okay? So from here, I'm jabbing and I'm watching him. When he starts to move, stop. I step off the line, turn my shin across the front of his thigh, make sure you pivot your bottom leg, and all the mechanics of your regular low kick. Okay? When you kick, try not to lean back. Lean in, kicking, like kicking a soccer ball. Here, boom, and then back. This hand, and come behind the back. For balance and control. A lot of snap, turn your upper body. All the details that you have learned in the past with your low kick. So, Chris is here against the cage. I start jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. He starts to move, boom, there's my low kick. Again, jab, jab, he starts to move, there's my low kick. Okay, try to retract back to your stance. And after that is done, boom, get back and corral him again. Don't let them up. And try that technique out when you're sparring. Jab fits to the side of their face. Good thing about that too is if you jab this way, your shoulder protects your, your jaw, okay, from an overhand right. If you jab too much this side, you're gonna get hit over top. All right, but that's a, another detail for another day. So practice that, try it out when you're sparring. I think it'll work very well for you.